about 30 years old, short brown hair, Caucasian, medium build, and around 170 pounds. Police strictly caution all women to never walk alone at night on campus and to avoid going out at all.
well publicized. Karen was saved by two angels who only allowed themselves to be seen by the man who waited for her. Another similar story took place in New York City's Central Park. Two police officers came upon a small shack-like building they believed drug dealers were working out of. They busted down the door, and much to their surprise, the shack was filled with many drug dealers, all armed with automatic weapons. The two police officers were no match for the many drug dealers. Nervously, they yelled, drop your weapons. They did. Later, when asked why so many drug dealers surrendered to only two police, their leader said, there's no way he could take on what he saw as an army of police officers outside of the door. The two police officers were strong in their Christian faith and they believe the drug dealer saw an army of angels in police uniforms outside of that door. Doug's angel saved not only his life, but an entire busload of lives. This story happened on the Newburyport Turnpike between Boston and Maine 50 years ago. Doug was 29 years old at the time, born and raised in Boston, that is where his encounter took place in 1942. I left Boston about 12.30 at night, doing for the main, the tour was to 10. And it was one of these nights that uh, this thing happened to me. Going up, and, uh, if you're not familiar with the area, the Newburyport Turnpike, which was a straight road from Boston to Newburyport, a very hilly. Because the glaciers came down, you know, they leveled off a lot of it and made a lot of hills. And as you come up the hills and go down the other side, in some instances there are crossroads. Well, on one of the hills there was an old farmhouse. Almost looked like a deserted farm. They had gone by it many, many times, and apparently was deserted. But this night was a black night, no moon. Came by, came up the hill, and as I'm going by. Somebody waved to me. Whatever it is, if someone waves you down, you should stop and pick them up. So I stopped. Well, you know, <laughs> driving a bus at night, you travel right along, you're not going very slow. You're doing, well, 55, 60, 55 miles out maybe. Come over the hill, and then I stopped beyond the house. I came back. You know, I got out of the bus, and I waited. And no one came, so I got out and walked back to the driveway of the farmhouse. There was no one there. And I looked around and looked around, no one. So I finally got back in the bus, started down the hill, and down near the bottom of the hill was a crossroad. It was a terrific accident that had happened at this intersection. Now, if I had gone over that hill at the rate of speed I was going, there's no way that I would have been able to stop before I hit that wreckage down there. It gives me the cold shivers just to feel. Don't think about it. It's the incident of God in Asia, which he was calling me more, because I could have been killed. And not only myself, I would have killed a lot of people because I had a bus for them. Doug's story has been recorded in a book and will be an encouragement for many future generations. About a year and a half ago, his pastor preached a sermon on God's angels and their place in our lives. At the time, no one could have anticipated what was about to happen. People came out of the woodwork wanting to tell their stories of angel encounters.